Parang nag-uusap lang kami. Yes. <laughs> Conversations with the CEO, take one. Hello, uh, the, here is another chance for us to talk about one thing that uh, the medical city is very proud of, and that's the reason for the conversations with the CEO, to focus on things that we are so proud about. And what we are very proud of, of really is the Center for Advanced Skills Simulation and Training Innovation, or CASTI for short, headed by no less than a who's who in minimal access surgery, Dr. Dio Gracias Albert Reyes. So many things about this, how it started. It started over a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. In 2012, actually, when uh, Dr. Reyes was actually assigned to head the uh, section of minimal access surgery. And he was given the challenge to push on to this and to train our residents. Now, training residency in surgery for a while has always been a apprenticeship model. Yes, sir. Which is basically, you see me, you see one, you do one, you teach one. So in other words, apprenticeship is, you spend more time with uh, the surgeons of your choice, mm -hmm. surgeons that you look up to, observe how he does things, and then try it out yourself. Yes, right? sir. Now you know that uh, this is not ideal in most instances because, of course, we're dealing with people and, uh, you know, live patients. And so it came to pass that we probably should start working on some models where we don't involve live humans. We started working on cadavers and models. So we would like to ask Dr. Uh, Deo Reyes here, what has been happening since we started this in 2014, 2012 over a cup of coffee, discussing the future of surgical training and how Medical City can be ahead of everybody else in terms of skills training. And so we have now Casti here, Deo, and this is now your <laughs> your playground, or yes, is sir. it now your empire? <laughs> My and, apparently, <laughs> and apparently it has been doing so well. Yes, and it is something that uh, I can say, and I can claim rightly, that this is a first in the Philippines. Yes, sir. Maybe you can talk about well, it. Well, that cup of coffee actually, sir, was more of a challenge than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I was newly appointed as chief of section, mm -hmm. and I was asked one question. As chief of section, how can you improve training uh, in surgery mm -hmm. at TMC? So I gave it a deep thought and uh, at that time, I asked for a meeting the week following that to be able to explain my thoughts. Mm -hmm. So it took me a week and uh, lo and behold, I found myself giving a three-hour presentation mm -hmm. on how, how I thought things should be done to improve surgery. Um, see one, do one, teach one uh, puts the institution at risk, mm -hmm. puts the patients at risk, and of course, the clinical careers of our consultants and mm -hmm. trainees. So, we initially thought of doing models mm -hmm. for the trainees to practice on and even go through uh, animal models at that time. Before we move on to 2014 and yes, then sir. starting it, you did train yes, sir. in uh, Dundee, Scotland, yes, sir. under uh, Dr. Alfred uh, Kosheri. Yes, and I think that provided you with some insights and uh, the vision as well yes. to, to move on with this CASTI. Maybe yes. uh, you can tell us more about that. Professor Kosheri is very uh, academic and has attention to the smallest details. Mm -hmm. So before we were able to have any kind of patient interaction, we actually spent three months locked up in a facility very similar to CASTI, perfecting, honing our skills before we actually had the smallest of patient interactions. Mm -hmm. So I got that attitude from there, that before you get any kind of patient contact, 
you already possess the skills mm-hmm. and you are competent mm-hmm. to interact with your patient safely. Mm-hmm. And that provided the impetus for forming CASTI the way it started out. How long did you spend in uh, Scotland? Uh, I spent a year and a half training yes, uh, in Scotland. Were you dealing with cadavers or with animals or some uh, um, uh, models? We, we started with animal models, mm-hmm. sir. It was a whole range. We started out with inanimate uh, models, mm-hmm. foam, rubber, latex. And then as our skills progressed, we went on to animal models. Mm-hmm. They were very creative. They to simulate the human anatomy. Sometimes they actually use different animals: mm-hmm. a goat, a pig, a cow. Mm-hmm. They took the internal organs, put them together to come up with a model which is more similar, similar yes. to the human anatomy, mm-hmm. and then practice. Mm-hmm. Then eventually, there were special occasions wherein we were able to practice our skills on cadavers. Cadavers already. Yes, yes sir. And so you were exposed to this for a year and a half. Yes. Uh, other than the skills that you acquired, what else did you learn from uh, Dr. Uh, from Professor Kosheri, uh, aside from the attention to detail, the constant development of skills, was the importance of um, research. Mm-hmm and the importance of assessing your performance mm-hmm. over time. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you perform a procedure for the first time, take time to assess how you did, whether you were successful or not, and what items or what points of the procedure that you did, mm-hmm. you can improve on. Okay. He espoused always taking down notes and discussing with him how the procedures go about mm-hmm. to improve. Even before the end of your training, you were ready to come back here. Yes, sir. And uh, what was your contact here in the Philippines? And say, these are the things that I learned here, and these are the things that we probably can implement in the Philippines uh, for the uh, trainees that we have. Because before that, it was really apprenticeship. Yes, sir. I mean, you yes, just sir. spend time with the doctors that you prefer, and then you try to learn as much skill as you get as you go, right? Yes. But remember, that, of course, the problem there is that you're dealing with human lives. There were some ethical aspects to that. No? So tell me, how did you prepare your trip back home? Having gotten back to the Philippines, uh, I really did not see mm-hmm. that in the foreseeable future that what I went through in training could be translated locally Mm -hmm. because the mindset of the medical community in the Philippines at that time was really to see one, do one, and teach one. Mm -hmm. Until this conversation that we had over coffee, until that appointment, and until I got that opportunity to present my ideas Mm -hmm. that we should change it. Mm -hmm. And it is a step towards the right direction Mm -hmm to change it, to mm-hmm. change the apprenticeship model. model. Mm-hmm. And that was when we started Good our series. conversations yes. in building a training and simulation center. But at the time, you were already a respected uh, <laughs> surgeon uh, in minimally invasive uh, surgery. Yes, sir. And uh, there is this association that uh, you belong to. Yes, sir. Uh, palace. It's Palace, no? Yes, sir. And at that time, uh, among those that were actually what, approved or uh, accredited? Uh, accredited? What's the term for that? To, to perform minimally uh, invasive surgeries, uh, predominantly uh, cholecystectomies, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, at that time, uh, the training was really the usual apprenticeship. apprenticeship. How long did it take for the CASTI to take shape? From inception to actual execution, um, it took us about two and a half years, sir. Okay. But of course, once the structure was up, it took a little time for people to get used to the idea of practicing on models. Mm-hmm. People will always say, oh, I've been able to do that on a patient mm-hmm. once or twice. Mm-hmm. Once or twice is enough. I can do it well but for you the know, third time. you know that it's not Yes, true. sir. Yes, That's sir. not true. So it's, it was a change of mindset that took time after uh, we built CASTI. But you know, Deo, one of the things that, you know, I'm a medical person, I'm not surgery. One of the things that I have always been a little livid against, you know, uh, in medical circles, is this thing about charity patients. Yes. Indigent patients. Yes. That you cannot be accredited as a training institution unless you have charity patients. And this has perpetuated the problem or the mindset 
yes. that you need to have charity to be able to learn. So we actually, in the past, would learn from indigent people. Yes. People who could not afford uh, the kind of uh, health care. And so otherwise would just have to offer themselves for practice in a sense. There was something unethical about it. Yes. Sir. Something that made me really uncomfortable. I actually fought, you know, to how do we put an end to this mindset that we can actually become great clinicians without having to depend on charity patients. No? And that, that's precisely why the CASTI model really appealed to me at that time. Now I understand that uh, right about the time that we launched CASTI, you already had a book published. Yes, sir. And maybe you can talk about that. Minimally invasive surgery was still relatively young at that time. Mm -hmm. And even the societies were not in agreement mm -hmm. whether it was a specialty on its own or is it incorporated into the different specialties and there was no uh, common text mm -hmm. since it was a C1 do